Here are some tips for doing the stitches in stitch and glue construction. When I set out to make this video, I had no idea how much I have to say about wire stitches. It turns out I have a lot to say. Much of it, Amy and I learned from Chuck Belong when we built our kayaks at Barbie Maritime Center in Astoria, Oregon. Chesapeake Lightcraft ships the teardrop camper kits with copper wire. Unlike some other stitch and glue projects, this construction using an external cradle-like mold doesn't lend itself well to gluing the seams of the panels together with thickened epoxy and then removing the stitches. In this project, Chesapeake Lightcraft has you pull the panels into position with copper stitches, tack them together using cyanoacrylate or CA glue so you can pull the stitches out, then glue the panels together using thickened epoxy fillets and fiberglass tape saturated with epoxy. You don't fill in the crevices at the joints until later. CA glue is basically the same thing as super glue. The glue shipped by Chesapeake Lightcraft includes a spray catalyst that hardens the glue in seconds. The packaging looks suspiciously like the packaging from Bob Smith Industries. By the way, if this is your first time working extensively with CA glue, you might want to invest in some Uncure. You can get Uncure from Bob Smith Industries. I'm willing to bet it works well with the glue from Bob's uh, Chesapeake Lightcraft. You probably want an assortment of small pliers and cutters. Some short flat ended ones, pointy ended ones, and flush and regular diagonal cutters as well as some nipper or nail pulling style flush cutters. These are particularly helpful in pulling out the stitches by pivoting them on the broad curved tip of the pliers. A lot of nail pulling pliers do not have flush cutting jaws, so keep that in mind when you're shopping for tools. Also, don't waste your time with great granddad's old pliers. Pliers with springs are very convenient and well worth the investment. If you're building the teardrop camper, the first stitches you're going to do are easy. You line up the first two panels face to face, then poke a wire through the stitch holes. You put in the stitches, leave them a little loose, and then unfold the two panels like opening a pop-up book. In a couple of spots, you need to re-drill the holes because they were filled in with epoxy. For most of the two hole stitches you do, it helps to bend the wire into a staple shape before you insert it. When you are inserting a stitch through three holes, that would be two panels and a part of the mold in which you build the camper, you will find a pair of needle nose pliers handy to help thread the wire through the holes. The wire wants to twist itself into a pretzel as you pull it through, so pay attention and straighten it out. Twists and knots make the wire weaker. It helps as you snug up a stitch to give it a tug and be sure you're gripping as much of the already twisted wire as possible. The tug pulls the stitch tight through the stitch hole instead of using the twisting motion to pull it through. Some important things to remember about wire stitches, especially copper wire stitches as opposed to the steel ones. One, the more you flex it, the more likely it is to break. Two, the more you stretch it, the more likely it is to break. Tightening a stitch to pull two panels together can break the stitch. You're better off trying to push the panels together and support them while you tighten the stitch. Three, 
You're going to break some stitches, maybe a bunch of stitches. You're also going to poke some holes in your fingers. Maybe not as many as if you were using steel stitches. But anyway, if you need to, wrap some sports tape around the ends of your fingers like my wife in this photo of her building her kayak. You might also want to start twisting the ends of the stitches into little curly cues. There's always a little blood and sweat in every project you make, literally. Four, some copper stitches just aren't up to the task of pulling the wood into position. A steel stitch is stronger. If you've broken a couple of stitches in a location where you remove the stitches before you use any epoxy, you can happily use some steel wire. Just don't use the steel wire where you have to leave a stitch buried inside a fillet. Those stitches have to be trimmed off on the outside and then sanded flush. One place you end up doing this is around the bulkhead. The copper stitch can easily be trimmed and sanded flush with the wood, but a steel stitch will be much harder than the surrounding wood and you will end up sanding wood and not stitch. Sometimes in the tighter corners you need to use short needle nose pliers instead of flat ended pliers, otherwise you'll end up gouging the wood. If you find you need an extra stitch to pull a panel more neatly together, don't hesitate. Nobody but you will notice the extra holes, but misaligned panels will be much more obvious and might even cause you headaches later in the build. In most spots, you are going to remove the stitch after applying a dab of CA glue. CA glue is a bit brittle, so make sure you aren't leaning on the panels as you undo the stitches. If you do break the CA glue, it's simple enough to put a stitch or two back in, pull it into place, and glue it back together. As you cut the stitches, it helps to reduce the damage to the hole if you bend the wire so you can pull it straight through. In a few spots, you may find a stitch that is glued with epoxy. Don't worry when it's time to pull out the stitch. It will eventually come loose, and unlike CA glue, you don't really have to worry about cracking the epoxy. Use flush nipper style nail or staple pullers, and try not to dent the wood. So that's it. I think that's it. Or maybe that's enough for now. Anyway, if you've made it to the end of this video, thanks for watching. I'll be posting another video, probably about something other than wire stitches, soon.